throughout my childhood, I didn't have the most fit body. And I was aware of that because of what others told me. In fourth grade, I used to carry this cute family picture of when I was only a baby. And I was also quite chubby then. One day, I was showing some of my friends this picture. And these other kids saw it and said, why did your parents raise a pig, not a human? Even today, I remember exactly who said it and how it was said. This, of course, left a big scar. And as I was telling my parents about it, I forced myself to admit that it wouldn't kill me if I maybe lost a couple of pounds. I was only in elementary school, but what the kids said had affected me in so many ways that it pushed me to going on a diet at such a young age. Throughout the process, my mom helped me lose weight in the healthiest way possible. And she encouraged me by being there for me every step of the way. With her help, I became happy with my decision. And I realized I wasn't choosing to change myself because others were forcing me to. I was doing it solely because I wanted to. However, there were still people around me. Those people that used to say, you're fat, or stop eating so much were now saying, why are you trying so hard to change yourself? Are you not happy with the way you are? Back then, I didn't understand what this was. I was first made fun of for being overweight, but when I found the strength to change, I was being criticized again. When the public receives stories from victims who have been bullied because of their appearance, it doesn't try to comprehend why or at what fault those victims are being neglected. In 2010, researchers in England and Wales spoke to girls between the ages 15 and 22. 56% of them claimed they have been abused verbally, physically, and through social media because of their weight, height, and hair color. Furthermore, a study published in the Journal of School Health in 2011 analyzed the weight-based victimization of young adolescents that showed one-third of girls and one-fourth of boys reported they have been bullied because of their weight, but this was more prevalent among the students considered heavy. Today, no, even if people were happy with their appearance before, after being bullied, they were pressured to see themselves in a more flawed way. Also, 40.8% of students admitted seeing other students being called names or getting teased based on body weight. Today, bullying continues to take down many young lives, rooting from the smallest reason, such as bullies believing they can denounce people using the terms overweight, ugly, or anorexic. The effects of being bullied ranges in a wide scale. Studies from anti-bullying organizations, such as StopBullying.gov, show that victims become more isolated from groups, find it difficult to sustain a healthy relationship with others, and begin to believe what the bullies say are true. From my personal experience and the research done on perspectives of other women, the similarity was that both myself and those individuals were being criticized rather than encouraged. This made me think, would anything have changed if others left a positive message rather than harsh words that only served the purpose to hurt our feelings? Psychological studies demonstrate that positive emotions create, encouragement creates positive emotions that allow us to perform better on cognitive tasks. Marcus Barajas, a psychologist from the Department of Counselor Education and Counseling Psychology, addressed that positivity has been associated with greater efficiency of both fundamental and cognitive processes. Our brain performs tasks more significantly if we're in a good mood. But when we are stuck in emotions of anxiety, stress, or depression, our brains become distracted and prevent critical thinking skills. Thus, positive reinforcement, such as being complimented when someone accomplishes something, can strengthen that person's cognition and help repeat the same behavior with determination. This is why using this kind of method, then rather than condescension, is extremely helpful to those who choose to change. Normally in American society, if a child comments on their looks, their parents reinforce that they're fine just the way they are. 
However, Korean culture takes a different approach. When I told my mom I wanted to lose some weight, she, rather than shutting down my thoughts of doing so, she supported my decision and helped me push through it. Even today, when I ask my friends whether or not I should lose some weight, I receive different reactions depending on what culture they were raised through. When I asked one of my uh, American friends, she said, no, you look fine, you have no reason to lose weight. In contrast, when I told one of my Korean friends, she said, I mean, if you really want to, I think that's a good idea, and you will look more healthier than you already do. My Korean friend's response may sound like a criticism to someone who isn't used to Korean culture, but her comment was not, definitely not meant to hurt me, but to rather support my decision if I chose to change. My American friend was not necessarily discouraging me, but she wasn't fond of the idea in giving the most honest opinion. Later on, when I became best friends with my American friend, I asked her the same question. And she responded very similar to how my Korean friend did, because she was now used to how I respond to such comments and was learning from my cultural aspects. There is a set difference between being discouraging and being an honest advisor. Discouraging is disapproving someone's decision and being strongly unsupportive, while an honest advisor gives an outlook on what they think, but then accepts the choices people make. I believe we can learn from the idea that giving honest advice in a nice way can positive, positively affect those who choose to change. People making discouraging comments isn't the only way people experience body dissatisfaction. We have come to see that the images of perfect bodies are portrayed in our daily lives through television, magazines, and social media. Although it isn't necessarily true that those images are realistic, we cannot deny the fact that society has a certain standard that people look up to. As we grow with the media's influence, we begin to cover what society perceives as a we begin to cover the flaws of what society perceives as attractive or good-looking. For example, Disney princesses. As children, we grow up, we grow up watching them. And in the past, these Disney princesses were all skinny, had big eyes, and had the same physical features. Recently, new Disney princesses, such as Moana, were shown to have different body figure and a diversely unique image. This improvement allows us us to see all aspects of body figures and images and look beyond what society perceives as attractive or good looking. The spread of diversity is a great way to illustrate that there's not just one body type or race that we must look up to to be called attractive by others. This does not mean we can't have a certain goal in the way we want to look, but society's unrealistic expectation shouldn't be the factor that decides who you are, but what actually does is your own belief that changing would make you happy and help you. Making the decision to change is tough, but confessing to others about it is also another challenging step. It takes a lot of courage to put yourself out there and admit to others that you wish to better yourself. As a teenager, I understand that people you use social media to um, confess their decision and possibly inspire those in similar positions as them. On popular social media such as Instagram, there are accounts called transformation feed where people post before and after pictures of those who've met their goals of appearance. One post that took my attention was a before and after picture of a couple that, have lo that lost weight together for their wedding. This post was intended to portray that people have met their desires of changing by working together. And many people left positive comments that respected and congratulated the couple for what they have accomplished. However, as I was reading through the comments, I saw some that said, they just changed clothes? So what's the transformation here? They changed their clothes, obviously, or they look bad both ways. We have to imagine the hardship behind the couple's decision to share their physical changes, but others bluntly ignore that and strike to intervene and break their strength and mentalities. 
Nowadays, because of those countless amount of negative comments made on social media, it is known to be a bad influence on all age groups, especially teenagers. Numerous amount of people have already built on the idea that we can use social media as a positive outlet to encourage others and support those who desire a physical change. We need to understand the extreme challenges people go through to become who they desire to be. And rather than pushing them away from their goals, we need to give a positive outlook and encourage them. Also, when we choose to change, we must realize we are not doing it for the sake of others, but solely for our own benefit. There is no limit as to how we can support each other. It could be done through social media, using positive reinforcements, and spreading diversity to show that we accept the decisions of those who choose to change. Thank you.